Welcome along guys, well here we are on another brand new bike review. This time it's the new BMW F900R, not the 800, this is the 900 version. I've had this all week and it's time for me to let you know what I think to this machine. Let's hit the road. Finally, we have a dry, fairly mild day for one of my reviews, which really makes a change. Normally it's wet. We can actually try this bike out properly, which I'm really quite pleased about because this is actually a bike with some proper sporty intentions. She sounds fruity. This bike has just had its international launch last week. Now, very kindly, BMW UK agreed to lend this to me first. I'm the first of the, uh, I'd say the word journalist, <laughs> in inverted brackets, but I'm the first person to get on their new fleet bike. This has just been run in, just been released to the press. I say press. I picked this up a couple of days ago. I rode it all the way back from Farnborough and to be honest with you, I was surprised. I, I really wasn't expecting much from this. I've ridden the 800 GS before, the old engine, and I felt a little bit underwhelmed by that engine. And it sort of almost put me off trying this and gave me some preconceptions of what this bike would be like. And they were all completely wrong. The bike has the reworked 900 motor. So this is the reworked 800 version of this bit more capacity they've gone over it they've they've tweaked it they've raised the power now to 105 brake horsepower i think it's 87 newton meters of torque it's all good i mean it's got a lot of punch that torque is actually delivered the peak torque is something like four and a half thousand revs so it's all very low down in the rev band which makes it effortless just to just to ride that wave of torque nationals the only thing that lets it down a little bit on the spec sheet is the fact that it weighs 211 kilos so it is it's not a light bike it's not as light as all of, of its competition it's hard to sort of know which is the lightest because the different manufacturers measure their weights in different ways BMW give you the wet weight full of oils full of fuel you know how the bike's going to be the curb weight ktm yamaha even triumph i think give you their weights dry so it's difficult to compare but i can tell you it feels like a, a heavier bike than the street triple it feels like a heavier bike than the duke this bike is full of technology it's got this incredible tft which is the same on the, as the one on the new GS, you know, the new S1000 RR. But that screen is the best TFT in the business, without doubt. You know, different views, you can just do so much with it. And it's even telling me lean angles and stuff at the moment. And all those lean angles are recorded onto this app you can integrate, the BMW Connected app, which I have on my phone and I'm actually using. Basically what this can do is after you ride, it will record all your detail. It will record your lean angles around certain bends. It will give you your speed, <laughs> which I've turned off. You can make it turn off so it doesn't record your speed for, for, for legal reasons. So I've turned that off, but it will, you can go back and look at your ride. It will tell you where you've been. You can set it just to get you somewhere going on some twisties, a bit like the Garmin functionality has. But, it, you know, from the look of it, it's a fantastic little app this say you wanted to take this on track which you probably could it, it, it handles beautifully take it on a track day and then you can see your lean angles around the track and the speed you were doing around the track and all the other good stuff and of course this has got all the navigation built into it as well so if you haven't got a way to display your phone case like this with my ultimate add-ons phone case you, you can have turn by turn navigation coming through on the dashboard as well and uh, that is, I mean, it's great. I, I, I've got a lot of time for that sort of technology on motorcycles when it works well. Let's just go through the mode buttons here. First of all, you can put the suspension in dynamic mode or road mode. So at the moment, I've got it in dynamic. It's only electronic on the rear. The fronts are completely 
unadjustable even. It's a little bit weird to just have electronic suspension on the rear and then have front suspension which is not even manually adjustable. But in fairness, the front seems really well set up and I didn't realise it wasn't electronic to start with. I was that impressed with the setup of it. So even though it is unadjustable, they've got it really got it set in a really good sweet spot. The rear you can adjust for preload as well. So if you've got luggage, if you've got pillions, you can set it for diff you know, those different weights. So the actual preload will adjust electronically. Well, I've actually got it set for a person and some luggage because I'm, I'm carrying a bit of extra luggage around the middle. All the electronic stuff's all well and good. But the best thing, and the thing I like about this bike the most, is the feel of it, the way it handles. It is really took me a bit by surprise actually just how good it is around the twisties get over if we throw it around my favorite bit of road it's so sharp the front the motor delivers all of that punch it does just give you a lot of confidence to push it around and it changes direction in an instant Front brake is brilliant, one finger braking. Because it's got the Brembo front calipers, you get so much confidence in the front end. It'll let you, you've got the confidence to push it. Change direction instantly. And the, and the 105 horsepower never felt so fast. Ooh, maximum lean angle 29 degrees I got up to 29 degrees out of 31 degrees to the left 29 degrees to the right back there <laughs> oh, I do love the gadgets in this display mode as I say you've got the lean angles you've got the amount of traction control intervention by the look of it as well and it also gives you your brake pressures I don't know what all that means, <laughs> but it's got all that info there. If you don't like that layout, push it forward and you can have just the big rev counter layout, which again is, is a very nice layout. I mean, that screen, as I said, it's the best TFT in the business. On the ergonomics, the only thing which I've noticed is the seat isn't very spacious. I can feel, with a last the size of mine, I can actually feel the rear pillion seat right touching my back all the time. On the lower, my lower back is being kissed by the rear pillion seat or the sculpting of the rear pillion seat because it is like a one-piece seat I'll point that out more on the walk around but I can feel it right there which may mean on longer distances you can get a little bit uncomfortable because you cannot move around much on the bike so that's the first little thing about the ergos which you need to bear in mind if you're a taller rider and a bigger rider I'm 6'2 18 stone so a big fatty the quick shifter and blipper is a little bit clunky i have to say the quick shifter isn't the smoothest the blippers the blippers all right it's just the quick shifter there's a few damp patches around here be a little bit careful you can hang off it yeah it feels it feels like you can hang off the bike it is definitely set up as a sporty machine the handling does just fill you with confidence I and mean, even though it's eight degrees today and the odd patch of damp on the roads it is very confidence inspiring I really like the riding position when you are pushing on with all that weight over the front it makes the front so quick to turn very very agile and I love the feedback it gives. It gives you a real sporty feel to the ride. You're just over that front end, and it's just, you know, the slightest inputs, and it obeys. You want a bit more lean angle, you just push it down a bit more. It is a lovely front end, it really is. Let's give it a little bit of a grunt test. It's fourth gear, two and a half thousand revs. It's got a good deal of pull. A very, very torquey motor, very usable. That's what twins give you, isn't it? Sixty miles an hour, three and a half thousand revs, three, th three just under four thousand. 
So I think 70, let's push to 70 down here. Yeah, just over 4,000 revs. So, you know, you could sit on the motorway all day. No problem whatsoever. Right, let's pull into the pub and we'll do a quick walk around. Get a pint. <laughs> no, no, we, we won't get a pint. There it is in all of its glory. Now, I posted a few pictures on my Instagram account. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll put a link at the bottom. Get on Instagram, but I, I posted a few pictures on there and people said, oh God, it looks horrible. I don't like that at all. I actually think it's pretty good looking. I think BMW have done a decent job with this, making something that looks a bit different. It definitely looks sort of futuristic. It looks modern. I like what they've done with the exhaust system. You know, the, the whole bike sort of follows a very angular, you know, it's not a smooth looking bike. All the angles are quite sharp on it. I actually think it looks pretty darn good, if I'm honest. You know, it's not as sexy as the Street Triple, you know, with its smooth lines, but it's a different sort of bike, a bit more angular, futuristic looking. <laughs> I like it. I like it in these colours as well. These colours are actually an extra 200 quid. If we turn it on, let's say it's keyless, you have to push the push the button to turn things on. Full LED headlights, you know, nice little touch with the little R symbol. And this even has cornering lights as well. So you have cornering lights at the bottom, Brembo brakes and Brembo discs as well. The suspension, as I mentioned, is not adjustable. It's completely unadjustable, which is a bit of a surprise. But like I said, you know, this bike has to meet a certain price point, but they have it set up really really well you wouldn't know this was well i don't think it is budget suspension it certainly doesn't feel like it the ride's good it feels nice when you're pushing on with it that there's nothing wrong with the suspension at all at the rear it has this zf suspension which is the dynamic esa suspension so that's the motor to actually actuate and adjust the preload on the rear shock so the rear is electronic and i say it's, it's preload so which is quite impressive if you've got a pillion you put it in pillion mode with luggage you know, it really gives you that dampening to suit the conditions. And I just noticed there's also a little USB charger on the back here as well. This one has the facilities for the panniers. So the, the, the luggage option on the back here, which I think is another 100 quid or so. And it has this rather strange rear seat cowl, which sort of just sits over the rear passenger seat and sort of straps on. So that is really rather strange. F900 stitching on the seat is a nice little touch. This one's got the keyless option, so the fuel cap is also keyless, which I think people know my views on the keyless fuel caps. They do worry me a little bit. Switch gear is busy, but it is all usable. Obviously your indicators, menu buttons, that adjust your suspension, and that one will turn off your traction, push of that and your traction control's off. So if you want a bit of hooliganism, push that button, turns the traction control straight off. You've got the jog wheel, which takes you through, the, through the, the menu system, and then it can tilt left and right to select and go back and forth. Cruise control with your, your start and stop button and your accelerate and decelerate button. This one has the BMW emergency thing. We open that, push the button. Oh, I nearly pushed it then. And that will call BMW emergency services to come and rescue you, or call the emergency services to come and drag you out of a ditch or take to hospital. Heat your grips at the top, and of course all the start buttons here. As I say, this is the best dash in the business, bar none. This is an excellent display on those BMWs. Lots of information, there's almost a bit too much information. You know, you've got trip, miles to Lempty, the time, you know, it's just so much info on here. I could do a whole video just on this dashboard, but it's a very clear, very well laid out, really, really good job on the dash BMW. Thumbs up. Looking at the bike, you can't see where costs have been cut to get this machine out there at 8.6. This has even got a centre stand. This has got the centre stand option as well. I've just realised this has even got a centre stand. How's that for practicality? You won't get that on your MT-09. Superz. That little box next to the main speed is the legal speed limit or the road you're on. So when you've got it connected to the app, it's using the GPS from your phone to tell you what the actual speed limit is of the road you're riding on. That, I mean, that, that's a good little touch, isn't it, eh? So whenever, how many times have you been riding on? I don't know, is this a 30, is this a 40? Well, it's quite obvious here, but a lot of situations it isn't. 
There you are. Sorry, officer. My bike told me it was a 60. So things I don't like, I think the position on it could get a bit tiresome on a long distance. We're saying it's a versatile bike and you could spend, you know, you could go touring on it. I'm not sure if this position would be the most comfortable position if you did go touring. As I say, you've got that rear seat right in the, my lower back, so I can't move back. I'm sort of locked in to the position on this a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of weight on your wrist. You are leaning forward a little bit. So again, is it gonna be comfortable if you're literally riding this all day? Other downsides, the quick shifter and blipper, as I mentioned, are a little bit on the clunky side. They're not too bad, but they're a little bit clunky. You may be able to work around it by giving a bit more lever input or a bit less lever input. This bike also has, it's just about its first service, so it's under, under a thousand miles on this. So that could improve as the mileage goes on to the bike and things wear in a little bit. So if you're thinking of an MT-09, you're thinking of a, a Duke 790, the only thing where this is let down a bit, this isn't quite as sports focused as those other bikes. I mean, if you want a hooligan bike, it's not quite as fast as, as the Street Triple or the MT-09. Also, it, because it's a bit heavier, it's not a wheelie monster, you know? So if you're looking just for a focused, quick naked, a middleweight naked, you know, no compromises, your first thing you want is, is naughtiness then perhaps look at the Street Triple, look at the, the Duke 790, the MT-09. I think the most impressive thing about this bike is what they've managed to achieve at the price point. Yes, you know, they've got it, your normal BMW, everything is an extra, but in some respects that's good because you get the exact spec you want. You know, I don't like keyless. You don't have to have keyless if you're buying a bike that way. So I, I kind of like that, even though I don't like it because obviously you've got to pay extra for stuff. It does mean you end up, at the end of the day, only the stuff you actually want, which I think is important. The fact that they've managed to bring the base bike out for 8.6 is incredible. And what's even more incredible is I can't see where they have skimped there's no area where you think, yeah, that's because it's a bike for 8.6. That's why it's got the cheap tyres on. That's why the suspension doesn't feel very good. That's why the brakes aren't as good as they could be, because it's 8.6. You go, don't get that with this, which is impressive. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs>